My experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman is going to come get them, right? But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black crime rates. When, you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the things that we're suffering from. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back again with a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out Candace Owens' Q&A, Crazy Liberals and Black Lives Matter. Okay, this is going to be interesting and <laughs> I would love to check this out with you guys. So you know how to do it? Let's get right into today's video. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. <laughs> okay, you know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much for your statement. Okay, that's true. That was a statement. Hi, how are you? Hi, I was wondering where you got your um, f statement, your statistic about people who transition, detransition, as well as the, that you are infertile after transitioning. Because yeah. I myself take hormones, I do testosterone injections, mm -hmm. and I've gone through a lot of doctors, and none of them told me that was true. Okay, so on my podcast, I actually cite all the sources. If you look up my name and my podcast, you can, I mean, it's in so many articles, and also, as I said, sexchangeregret.org actually lists all of these statistics with their sources. Um, so obviously, I don't, I, I can't give you a hyperlink as I'm standing on the stage, but you can definitely find it on my podcast, and you can find it on sexchangeregret.com. Thank you for the question. That was, I think, the first question we got there. Hi. <laughs> Um, according to Britannica, the definition of the nuclear family has expanded with the advert of same-sex marriage. Children in nuclear families may be couples biological or adopted offspring. Does this mean that the merch you sell supporting you know, nuclear families means that you support trans couples adopting, gay couples adopting, and spreading this rhetoric that you yeah. talk about? So you're talking about the expansion of definition. So right now they've expanded the definition of woman to include biological males. This gets back into what I was saying earlier about the left's controlling linguistics and just pretending that, okay, a nuclear family can now be two trans parents um, that are adopting a child. That is not the nuclear family unit that I am talking about. Um, I believe that I am talking about marriage between a male and a female, which naturally and biologically produces children. Uh, so no, I do not take that new updated definition of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a nuclear family. Thank you for your question, though. Such tricky questions. Hi. I'm trying to try Hello, to my question is a little bit of a different speed. Uh, earlier today, you mentioned uh, Patricia Colors or somebody from the BLM movement, and you said that her only qualifying factors for speaking about different things and issues was because she was black. And during the White House hearing about white supremacy, you was mm -hmm. on that. And a question was asked whether white supremacy is a threat or not. And your only qualification to speaking on that was being black. So what do you say to people that say I, they're being a hypocrite? Yeah, so I didn't say on this stage that Patrice's only qualification was being black. I said that people gave her tens of millions of dollars, had no idea where it was going to go, and were happy to do it because she was pirating. She just kept saying Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. It was stupid. They lost their money. Bad investment. Oh, well, too bad, so sad. Um, regarding qualifications to speak on what's harming black America, you just have to be able to examine actual statistics, right? Mm. Are, you, are you telling me, would you honestly say that when you walked into this room today, you were afraid that white supremacy was going to kill you? I ask this to black people, to be honest. Are you afraid that a Klansman is going to come down the, down the street on horseback and pick you up? Be honest. Um, I'm not, I'm personally not afraid. Okay, but. so that's it. So when I was speaking at the congressional testimony, I was saying, my experience being black in America, I don't know any black people that are fearful to walk down the street because they think a Klansman is going to come get them, right? But I can list you tons of black people that grow up in poverty, that grow up in the hood, that grow up around gang culture that are fearful when you examine black on black crime rates. When you, when I was just talking about illiteracy rates, I said that I could list a hundred things 
the black community is suffering from today before I got to white supremacy, and yet the focus and the emphasis in the school system has been to brainwash us to believe that white people want to kill us around every single corner, and I think that that's a harmful ideology because it doesn't allow us to actually focus on the things that we're suffering from. You know, number one, I would say, is father absence. We need to get our families back together. We have to stop letting the government raise us. Um, I do believe, I, I agree with some of the things you just said, but at the end of your point, you just mentioned a father absence and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and studies are actually shows that black men who are actually in their home participate with their children more than any other race. Yeah, so, great. So what, do you, what you just said is a fallacy then. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when there's not a black father in the home, right? So every natural ill follows in the black community. So when you separate the black family, if you look at statistics between black families that are together and white families that are together, the poverty rate, I mean, it, they're, they're both doing well. You're, it's a two-point difference between white and black families. When you remove and you break down the black family, it's unbelievable, right? It's a pathway to prison. It's a pathway to illiteracy. So I'm only talking about broken down black families. I'm not saying when the black family unit is together. That brings us back to the Winslows, Family Matters, and the greatest show that was ever on television. I do want to get some more people. I want to get some more people. Thank you so much for your question. First of, uh, hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for coming to the campus. Uh, second you. of all, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to your faith. Um, as a Christian myself, I know you're a Christian. Um, I saw the video you put up uh, about the Christian debate with your husband and Allie B. Stuckey. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your faith and how that's kind of inspired you. Yeah, so, the, uh, hmm, well, you know then that I am sort of in between a rock and a hard place right now. I am Protestant. My husband is Catholic. Um, I'm looking more at the Catholic faith for a lot of different reasons. Um, first and foremost, because I, I do believe that males lead the household, and so my children are being raised Catholic right now. Um, and so currently at our house, we go to two different churches, which is not ideal, but for hol holidays, we go to the Catholic church. I was raised by my grandfather. He was by the book, uh, when I say in terms of the Bible, the reason why he was never invested in um, secularism of any sort is because he thought that all of it was the devil. He was like that devout of a Christian. He didn't celebrate any holidays um, and really kept to really just his faith and his family. And so I always say that I was very immersed in scripture when I was a child and then I very much resented it once I got into school because it wasn't cool to be a person that read the Bible. It still isn't cool to be a person that has faith, especially if you're on a college campus. It's something that is looked down upon. And it's actually one of the pillars of leftism that I wish I had talked about tonight is atheism, which was also crucial to Marxist beliefs. They, you were not allowed to have faith if you lived in a socialist or a communist society uh, because they wanted the government to become your god. They wanted you to believe in nothing else but the government. And you're seeing that take place today as atheism is being encouraged. Pleasure to meet you. I've been Hi. wanting this for a while. So my name is Joshua. I am from Brentwood, New York. You guys should Google Joshua Chan, Brentwood, New York. Great person. I'm great. Um, anyway, so just it's about health. I want to switch to healthcare. My favorite topic in the world. I love What's health. that? Healthcare. Healthcare. Okay. Great. Miss Owens, Disaster. I'd like to begin by underscoring the importance of healthcare as a fundamental right. Many Americans, including working class white, black, Hispanic, conservatives, believe mm -hmm. that everyone should have access to quality healthcare without financial barriers. Additionally, as conservatives also prioritize fiscal responsibility, it's worth noting that the United States spends more money on healthcare than any developed nation, mm -hmm. yet lags behind in health outcomes. It's, yep. a, it's a situation where it seems like we're paying too much and not getting enough in return. Conservative, oh. and this is the question now. Okay. Conservative healthcare policies have often emphasized individual choice and market-based solutions. Mm -hmm. However, it's, off, it's been observed that private health insurance companies often prioritize profit margins over patient care and can lead to yeah. administrative efficiencies. In contrast, universal healthcare systems as seen in many developed countries not only ensure that healthcare is a human right for all, but also achieve a greater cost effectiveness and efficiency. Yeah. From a moral and fiscal standpoint, it's a compelling argument to eliminate the middleman, reduce administrative costs, and negotiate lower drug prices to make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all Americans. Yeah. Lastly, no one in this room likes their health insurance company. No one. Yeah. Essentially, they, 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 especially when the health insurance companies deny care. People like their doctors. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Last question, sorry, sorry. So, uh, how can conservative, health, conservative healthcare policies yeah. align with these moral principles of equity and compassion and ensure that everyone can access healthcare without financial hardship? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do two, go more, ahead, go ahead. two more questions after this, maybe? Okay, that's a long one. Two more, guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of you. Um, so, 
first and foremost, the healthcare system is an absolute disaster. I have an entire episode where I sat down with someone and discussed this. Um, people wrongly believe that what's currently happening is our, our healthcare in America is an example of capitalism in the free markets. It absolutely is not. It is the exact opposite. Um, the fact that you walk in to a, a clinic, you don't know what anything costs. You're essentially blindfolded. You go to the hospital and then you get a magical bill and they say, oh, that Tylenol that you had, we didn't tell you it cost $400 for one tablet, is, is just completely wrong. America is not an example of free markets and being able to actually choose. Um, so that is that is the first problem, is that the bureaucracies, everything behind it just needs to completely die. If we actually had a free market solution to healthcare, and it's interesting because I'm married to someone that's from the UK, where yes, they do have government-sponsored healthcare via the NHS, but it's a disaster and they're all able to pay privately and they're able to compete and give people the lower, the lower price, it, it's phenomenal. So an example of that that Charlie Kirk always gives is LASIK surgery. Back when LASIK surgery was being covered by insurance, it was astronomical, the price to get your eyes fixed. And then insurance said, we'll no longer cover it. We consider it to be cosmetic. And now you can get your eyes fixed with LASIK for like $3,000. So it went from being $25,000 per night to $3,000 because they allowed competition. So when health insurance companies were actually removed from the equation, it mm -hmm. then became a free market environment and doctors were going, okay, I'll compete and here's how much I'm willing to do it for. So all of that needs to be disrupted so that doctors can actually compete for our dollars. And I think the health insurance companies are in, in a, an absolute scam. And I hope that it collapses in the near future. So we're trying to get two more questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But health, it's an important topic, so I'm glad you brought it up. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of reading and how that helps people be more enlightened and speak um, and think more freely. What do you think about that um, when we're thinking about book bans happening in states like Florida? Um, so I want to be careful uh, because now we're getting a lot of books and I'm not sure that they are the books that should be in classrooms like White Fragility, which they're you know passing around, which is just really state topics that are being implanted into people's head. Um, I'm talking about, you know, true education, like people actually learning hard academics and not fluffy ideologies. Um, but the, what book ban are you talking about when they're banning like CRT? Uh, I believe there's been a variety of books um, related to... But they're to not banning you from buying them. They're saying we're not going to have them in the school system. Uh, yes, at school, yeah, libraries, totally fine. and it's also with LGBTQ plus books and related topics. For kindergartners, yeah. I, I think sexuality and uh, little five-year-olds don't mix. Okay, this was a lot. <clears throat> First, it talked about um, okay, LGBTQ matters, then Black Lives, race, then healthcare. Those are important topic. Um, for the guy who talked about the um, Black Lives Matter thing, I love how Candace Owens kind of like explained properly what she said because he was using her own word against her, and she have to clarify it. Like anyone who comes about them using the word Black, 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 and people. Are, sending in thousands or millions of dollars, they're kind of like wasting the money. Because um, we all know that in black families that have, that were people, children were raised by a black mom or some black dad, they tend to groom way high than being single mom raising a child or a single dad raising a child. So both parents have to come together. I feel like um, Americans have to change this um, way of government training children so that the parents can be able to stand and take care of their own kids, their own self. I know some some parents are not like, kind of like capable in terms of like, let me say mental health and maybe some of them are drug abuse, they dr abuse drugs and government have to take the children away from them. But parents, for but household has been brought up by two parents, the children tend to thrive more. We all know that. So it's advisable for black families that um, we incorporate such attitude. And the rate of divorce now that divorce is alarming, uh, this generation is something else. It's getting to something else. So uh, I feel like it will take us time to come back to the um, traditional aspect of us when father and mother are together raising a child. It will take us a long time because of this rate of high rate of divorce that's going on now. And, also, drugs abuse of parents, then governments will have to take the children away from the parents or parents who are abusive by physical abuse, 
parents have to, government have to take the children away from the parents and stuff like that. So, um, so that's that. That is just about the Black Lives Matter matter um issues. Then we come to the health issue. I know that a lot of people are complaining about this insurance routine, and it's still terrible. Some people see insurance as a scam. Um, for that, partially, <laughs> especially scam somehow, but it's it also have its own benefits, a lot of benefits. So I won't just see it show. It, I wouldn't just take it that it should be removed. I don't think health insurance will be removed in any time now, over in the nearest future, because health insurance really help people a lot. It's it's have saved a lot of lives, irrespective of how can these women say they have to remove it or not. It have really saved and helped a lot of people, helped a lot of lives in different different patterns. So I'm um, coming to the one about the books. That she she was talking about um if they should be saying the LGBTQ books outside the school, um if they are going to be saying it outside the school is better, but if they are to send it in the school and teaching the kids about LGBTQ plus, <clears throat> that's why I, I I take it to offense because it should not happen in school. Children should not be learning about things about their sex life, about hormones and stuff like that. That's why when they are very very young. That is if I cross the line. That is if I, I don't tolerate. I feel like they are sending it outside, and okay, they can sell it outside, outside the school, outside the college, outside the premises of school. It's all right, as long as the, if the parents feel like their children are like that, then you should do it to their own kids. But it's not everyone who have such narrative or such belief about LGBTQ and puberty blockers or changing someone's gender from this to that. Nah. So aside, if it's that, then it, it's all right. So this was an interesting video to watch. I enjoyed myself. I love how Candice Owens um, break down a lot of questions and she was not confused. She tried explaining it as best as possible. And it was interesting to watch. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as can subscribe to China. I will see you guys on the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That dump, dump shaker. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, you in my bed. I got scales on.